The other day I was trying to remember the last time I built an electronic kit. I know I built in the 70s, I built a Heath VFO for my transmitter back in, I think, 73. And I built a couple other little devices. But I haven't really built a kit in many decades, so I thought it would be kind of fun to build a kit. You know, you don't have to fish for parts and you don't have to make a circuit board. So I found on the internet very inexpensively this six digit 24 hour clock. I have an analog clock for my ham radio room but I thought it would be nice to have a, a digital clock so I picked up this kit and uh, <laughs> the circuit board actually looks pretty good. It, it didn't come with a schematic which I was really surprised but the board is stenciled uh, or silk screen with all of the component values so this should go together pretty quick has a number of CMOS circuits it's got chips for the for the uh, ICs I wish I had some sockets for the displays but it doesn't so I'll have to solder those in but it's got all the parts here got a bunch of 1k resistors for the current limits for the LEDs um, and as you can see here's all the parts so what I'm going to do, I am going to put this together and then check it out and we'll see if it's any good. I think this thing was only like $13, $14, $12, something like that. So anyway, if you need a six-digit clock, this might be a, a fun project for you. So anyway, stand by for the construction. I won't put you through the construction. Nothing worse than watching somebody solder parts on a circuit board. It's, that's pretty boring. So I'll come back when I get the board populated. Well, I've got the board stuffed and soldered. I haven't put the chips in yet. Here's the completed board. This went pretty easy. I didn't have a schematic, but the board was still screened with all the component values. I'm going to check to make sure all of the quick inspection. I see I missed one joint here I didn't solder on one of these chips here. So I'll take care of that or on the socket anyway. Okay, I will insert the chips and then we'll power it up and see what we get. Hopefully a display and no smoke and no high current low voltage conditions. So stand by for the smoke test. All the chips are in. I checked the board over so I will apply 5 volts right now. And it appears to be working. The way this thing works, you get a switch. Didn't get any instructions with this thing, but it looks like this switch will stop the second hand, so I'll stop it at zero. Okay, I've stopped the second hand, and then I can set the minutes and hours. You could either listen to WWV or use your use your uh, reference time clock and then when you hit the zero time you can count it down and then uh, three two one hit the switch and now it'll start counting that seems to work these kits were pretty cheap I bought another one too here um, the only thing I didn't like the CMOS chips are packed in a plastic box, which luckily I didn't have any trouble with it. I got a lot of uh, 4000 series CMOS, so I could have replaced any of those. The only thing I would have done different, too, I think I would have put sockets for the digits here. Not really necessary. Boards are really nice. I like how the they did the boards here. Silk screen, all the values on it. Real easy 
really easy uh, kit to put together. So if you need a 24 hour clock for your ham station or whatever, I suggest getting one of these. Fairly inexpensive. I've seen these on AliExpress and on Amazon. They're only like 12 or 14 dollars, something like that. I'm going to set the clock to WWV. So I've got it set up here at the next tone. Which is coming up now. Hours, 33 minutes. This will be a brief description of the operation of the 24 hour clock here. The time base is generated in U10. This chip here, this is a CD4060. It's a 14 stage ripple counter, divider, and oscillator. You can see it's got a crystal here. 32.768 kilohertz so it's a crystal control oscillator and then that's divided down and pin 3 of that chip has a 2 hertz signal and that's delivered over here to pin 3 of U1 this is a dual D flip-flop and that divides it again in half to 1 hertz and that's applied to pin 1. So pin 3 is a 2 hertz signal you can see here which is here and pin 1 is a 1 hertz signal which you can see here. Now that 1 hertz signal goes through this switch 1 here and is applied to pin 2 of U9. Pin 2 of U9 is the enable pin of section A. These uh, chips here are a two section chip. I have a somewhere. I have a schematic of this chip. You can look here. It's a CMOS up counter here dual up counter there's two sections A and B they have BCD outputs and they have a clock and enable a clock and a reset for each section so here's section A and section B so section A is receiving one Hertz pulses here and they're being counted up and the output pins three four five and six that's a BCD output that's being used to drive the seconds digit, the the uh, the ones of the seconds digit, zero through nine seconds. Now, when this count in binary reaches nine, it's reset. When the BCD output of section A hits eight, which is one zero zero zero. Pin 6 here will go high, but it's also connected to pin 10. And that's the enable pin of section B. So with each 0 through 9 counts of this digit, section B will increment 1. So it'll count 0 to 9, and then this will increment 1, 0, 9 again, this will increment 2, etc. So it's counting up in the seconds here. So now this digit has to count from 0 to 5, so as it's counting, once it hits binary 6, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, section B, pin 12 and 13, these two pins will be high, 0, 1, 1, 0. And they're also connected to the two inputs of a two input AND gate, U12C here. When those two pins go high, pin 10 goes high, and that's connected to pin 15, which is the reset of section B. So that will reset to 0. So this section will count 0 to 5 and then go back to 0. And then each pulse that comes through, that'll happen. So these pulses are feeding this section, counts to 9, counts to 5, goes to 0. 
Now at the same time, the output of pin 10 here is coupled over through this diode to pin 2 of section A of U8. So now U8 is going to start counting when it gets that pulse, and it'll count up to 0 to 9. And the same thing is over here. When you reach um, binary 8, pin 6 goes high, which sets pin 10 high, which increments section B. So in other words, section A will count 0 to 9, and at that point, it will enable section B, which will increment 1. So now we're counting minutes, and these are tens of minutes. So here's seconds, tens of seconds, minutes, tens of minutes here. Now section B of U8 is also counting 0 to 5, similar to this one. So in this point here, goes to binary 6. When it hits 6, this will be 0, 1, 1, 0. And they're also connected over to this AND gate here. So when this toggles to 6, this AND gate will come back here to pin 15, and it will reset B. So this section will count 0 to 5 and then back to 0. At the same time, the output of that AND gate is connected to this diode over to section A of U7. Now U7 is going to start counting up. Now section A of U7 will count up. And when it hits 9, it'll reset to 0. And at the same time, just as in over here, when it hits its upper level of 9, pin 10 is, is uh, pin 10 goes high and pin 10 is enable B. So enable B, B increments 1. So the hours, tens of hours, will increment 1. And that'll continue now until we end up at the end of 24 hours here. And when that happens, both U7, A, and B have to reset to 0 and start over again. And that's done with U12A, this AND gate here, and you can see that's connected to pin 12 of, U, of section B and pin 6 of section A. And when those two points go high, the output of uh, this AND gate will go high and reset both A and B. So this will count up to 24 and then reset back to zero. And you can follow the pulses through this unit here. You can see using a, a logic probe here, which comes in handy. Here's an example here. Here's pin 10. If you watch pin 10, which is the enable of B, when this goes to 8 it goes high and then when it drops down this will increment. So when it hit 8 it goes high and it drops low this one increments. Here it'll do it again. If you watch the light here it's on the trailing edge so if you watch high, low and it increments and that would be pin 10 which is here and of course if you go down through the chain here you can measure each point here although as you get down here it's going to take a long time this one is changing pretty quick these take a while to change you know this changes from 0 to 2 you'd have to wait quite a while if you want to measure those here's the power input here it just has one 100 microfarad capacitor across the power supply pins. I think there should be some more filtering in here, some decoupling, so I'm going to add some decoupling capacitors on the other side of the board just to make it a little more stable. Seems to run okay though. That is it for the operation of this unit. Pretty ingenious how they did this here. This uh, 
Reminds me of the 1970s, how they used to do things. Using discrete logic gates instead of one big LSI that does everything. So this would be a really good project for students or kids that are learning electronics. They not only learn how to solder, which by the time you solder all these points, you'll know how to solder, at least you better. And then they can learn how the digital logic works here. This is a this was a nice kit. I'm going to build another one, and I'm going to have one that measures UTC and the other one Central Standard Time. It's going to put them in a some kind of a enclosure, but I kind of like showing the the guts of it. Another thing I might do in this one, I'm going to put sockets in for the displays here so I can put the displays in sockets. It'll bring them up a little bit too. They're soldered in. All the chips are in sockets, which is kind of nice. Anyway, that is the description of the circuit. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.